What's up, YouTube family? It's your girl, Candy with Kayla, and I'm back with another freaking video. Did you miss me? Because y'all already know I missed y'all. But as you can see, we're going to get into another round of these three unbelievable true stories that will literally blow your mind. Like, this stuff going to be crazy, y'all. And this time, it's just going to get weirder and weirder from one to three. So you need to stay the whole time so you can hear how mind-blowing this thing really get. But before we get into today's video, you already know, if you're new to this channel, hey, hi, thanks for tuning in. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you're a fan of story times, reactions, and reviews, because that's all I post here. And I post every other day, sometimes every day, depending on my mood. So go ahead and turn those post notifications on as well, because how are you going to know when I post if you don't? If you're not new to this channel, thank you for tuning in. Again, thank you for running up the likes, the views, and the comments. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate y'all so much. But I'm going to stop running my mouth and get into today's video. From 2000 to 2013, Cornelius Mike Anderson miraculously turned his life around. Growing up in a suburb of St. Louis, Missouri, Mike was a troubled young man that seemed destined for jail time. But something changed for him in the year 2000 when he was 23 years old. Suddenly, he wanted to make the most out of his life. So he distanced himself from his old friends and he moved to a different suburb outside of St. Louis called Webster Okay, Burns. Mike. There, he started a successful construction company. He got married, divorced, married again. He had three kids and became the father to a stepchild. He was very active in his community, okay, volunteering Mike. countless hours at his church, as well as becoming a youth football coach. Anyone that met Mike after the year 2000 only had wonderful things to say about him. But Mike had a big secret about his past that he was just hoping never saw the light of day. Back in 1999, mm. when Mike was 23 years old, he robbed a Burger King outside of St. Louis at gunpoint. He was arrested in the year 2000, convicted of armed robbery, and sentenced to 13 years in prison. Shortly after his conviction, he was out on bail pending the outcome of his appeal. But when his appeal was denied in May of 2002, Mike was expecting to go back to jail. And so he asked his lawyer, you know, what are the next steps? Because I'm out on bail. Do I go to the jail? Do, do they come to get me? And his lawyer said, oh, no, they'll work? issue a warrant for your arrest. They will come oh. to your house and they will take you to jail. So Mike got his affairs in order and he waited to go to jail. But no one ever showed up. And so days turned into weeks, turned into years, and no one ever took Mike to jail. Because it would turn out the state had made a clerical error, and they believed Mike was already behind bars when he was actually just at his home. And in July of 2013, at the end of his original 13-year sentence, they went to go release him from prison. That's when they realized he had never been incarcerated. So eight how, US how how do you even make this kind of error? This the most major error you could make. Like I don't even understand how that error could be made. Marshals immediately went to his house and they arrested him and they brought him to jail. And there was this huge public outcry that it was totally unjust that you're arresting him now because it's the state's fault that they did not bring him to jail. It's not Mike's fault. And Mike right. used that opportunity to become a totally changed man. And so after a number of appeals and this very public petition of people trying to get Mike out of jail, a judge finally took a closer look at Mike's case. And it would take this judge only 10 minutes to come to the conclusion that Mike was in fact a changed man and should not have to serve the rest of his sentence. And so although Mike was held for nine months after being rearrested, he was released and today he is a free man. But let me tell you, I'm telling y'all, it was because he was black, that's why they came and locked him up before they even tried to figure anything out. Because if he was not black, y'all know, they would have looked into all of that before they came and got Mike. Like, come on, let's be honest. That is messed up. But I'm glad that Mike got justice in the end. And I'm glad that he turned his life around because a lot of people don't. Like, a lot of people just don't turn their lives around. So, big up to Mike. That was the Tromp family were by all accounts a normal, hard-working household. 51-year-old Mark Tromp and his wife, 53-year-old Kobe Tromp, had established a successful red current farm and earth-moving business at their property in Sylvan, which is just outside of Melbourne. Their three adult children, which were 29-year-old Rihanna, 25-year-old Mitchell, and 22-year-old Ella, all lived and worked with them at the farm. 
But their seemingly ordinary lives would change forever on Monday, August 29th, 2016. That day, without any warning, the family dumped their passports, credit cards, and cell phones on the kitchen table and ran out the front door, leaving it unlocked. They hopped into Ella's car and drove north. 30 kilometers into their journey, and it was discovered that the son, Mitchell, still had his phone. And so the others yelled at him to throw it out the window. And so he did. He chucked his phone out the window. The family drove all day what? and night until they reached a motel in the New South Wales town of Bathurst, 800 kilometers away to the west of Sydney. The following morning, Mitchell decided he did not want to be a part of whatever it was they were doing. And so he abandoned his family and began heading home. The remaining four no, family Mitchell. members did not go after Mitchell. Instead, they just piled back in the car and drove east to a popular tourist destination called the Genelin Caves. It was there that the two daughters, Rihanna and Ella, decided that they also did not want to be a part of whatever it was they were doing, and so they snuck away from their parents and stole a car and began heading home. The parents, after realizing their daughters had now left, did nothing. How did they sneak, sneak away and steal a car? Like... And how he just be glossing over stuff like he ain't just saying, sir, what? They did not go after them. The two sisters drove south to the town of Goulburn where they called the police to report their parents missing. The story made its way into the media where the family was initially ridiculed for getting lost in the first place and getting completely separated in an area they should know well. This is their country. It's not a remote area. They were near big established towns the entire time. It just didn't make sense. But when police went to the Trump family farm back in Sylvan and they discovered the front door was unlocked, there were credit cards, passports, and phones on the table, suddenly it seemed like there was a lot more to this case than met the eye. And so it's as this strangeness came into focus in the media, people stopped ridiculing the family and began speculating what caused them to suddenly flee their house. Was it something in the water they were drinking? Was there chemicals on the farm that was screwing up their brain? Were they running from... I'm most certainly sure that they was running from somebody like, did they get in trouble with the mob? Who they owe money to? What y'all think? Drop down in the comments and let me know what y'all think. Hurry up and do it right now before I hit play. I'm going to give y'all two seconds to start coming. That's it. <laughs> from someone were they in debt you know what was it that caused this strange sudden departure back in Goldburn, yeah, after reporting their parents missing rihanna and ella inexplicably separated at a gas station rihanna just climbed in the back of some utility truck and ella hopped in the stolen vehicle and started driving home later that night ella would become the first trump family member to be located by police when she arrived at the farm and police were waiting for her there mitchell would arrive back home the following yeah. morning after taking a series of trains to get there once mitchell and ella were reunited they made a statement to the media outside of the family farm and as you're looking at them it's clear they're totally shell-shocked they don't know what's happened and they're trying to articulate why their family left in the first place and what they were doing and where they're going and the best they could do was to say well there was a lot of pressure on our family and it was it was building up and these things are just difficult to explain and and i don't really know what we were doing mitchell would say that there was a belief that people were after them there was some paranoia there I but told that paranoia was, was predominantly held by their parents while mitchell and ella were certainly in a state of shock they did seem mentally stable the same could not be said for their sister, Rihanna. She was discovered by the driver of the truck she had snuck into after he had driven over an hour away. He had pulled over to check on something. He had gone around the back and then had the life scared out of him when he saw Rihanna just sitting there in a, what he called, catatonic state. She didn't know her name. She didn't know where she was. She was just sitting there. Rihanna was taken to the Goldburn Hospital where she was put into their psychiatric unit. As media interest grew, the parents, Mark and Kobe, got back in their car up at the Genelin Caves and drove south towards Melbourne. A day later on Wednesday, the pair had driven 600 kilometers to the Victorian town of Wangaratta, where they too inexplicably separated. Kobe turned around and started heading north again by means Why does of everybody still keep a mystery. And a day later was found 350 kilometers away in the town of Yas in a very agitated state. She was taken to a hospital there, but then transferred to the Goldburn Psychiatric Unit. To First of all, they got some cool names, Rihanna and Kobe, like... But I just need to know why y'all separating. What is going on with this family? To be with like, daughter, what are y'all doing? Mark stayed in Wangaratta, and he was there for several days. And during his time there, he was spotted by a young couple really aggressively tailgating them. And then he was spotted again on another day fleeing from the car he had been driving. 
Finally, on Saturday evening, all of the Trump family members were accounted for when Mark was finally discovered sitting next to the road near the Wangarata airport. He was questioned by police and then assessed by a mental health officer and then was released into the custody of his brother, who was a police officer. And as they drove away, Mark turned around and flipped off the photographers that had converged on the spot. He later released a more contrite statement, apologizing for the hurt and concern that were caused by these events. And he also paid respect to the police and the volunteers that went out looking for them. After the investigation, the police determined that nobody was chasing this family. They were not in any danger. The family had also not taken any drugs. They were not in debt. They were not involved in any sort of religious cult. And prior to this strange event, the family had no history of mental health issues. After the dust had settled and the Trump family was just back at their farm going about their normal life, every media outlet wanted an interview with them to try to learn more about why this strange thing happened. But the family said, we're not doing interviews. We're not putting out any more statements. We just want to be left alone. And so as a result, all... Child, this family done Kelly priced us. I know you lying. So it wasn't nothing wrong and they was not missing. They just disappeared. Do y'all think, now, just go with me here, okay? This might sound a little far-fetched. Do y'all think that maybe the parents were about to take the kids somewhere and kill them? Maybe that's why they did all of that. Like, maybe they were going to kill the kids and go off-grid. What y'all think about that? Because it's I don't know what other explanation to give. And the leading theory was that the Trump family was suffering from something called folly adieu, which is a French term that means madness for two. And what happens is one person who is delusional can pass that delusion on to other people. And this typically only happens in very close-knit families or in very tight romantic relationships. While it's unclear which of the Trumps became psychotic first, doctors say it is clear at some point they were in a cycle of reinforcing each other's delusions if this folly adieu theory is the right one. While the full reasons for why the Trumps went on this strange voyage will probably never be known, the police deemed it a family matter and did not press charges. Hey, mom, dad, I think here. if you go missing, I think if a person is not missing and they got everybody looking for them, that should be a crime. What kind of crime? I don't know, but some kind of crime. Because they was just crazy. In 2007, 35-year-old like, Eva Vizhnirska was a member of the German national paragliding team. Over the previous two years, Ava had competed in 10 of the world's biggest paragliding competitions, and she had won six of them, making her the top female paraglider in the world. So coming into that year, Ava was very motivated to work extra hard to make sure she retained that title as world champion. On February 24th of that year, Ava was preparing her gear alongside two other paragliders on Mount Bora in New South Wales, Australia. This was Ava's last training opportunity before her first major competition of that year, which was scheduled for the next week. As they were getting ready to launch, one of the coaches walked in front of the group and made an announcement. He said storm clouds have been spotted to the north, but the forecast was a little bit ambiguous. It wasn't clear if the storm was gonna move over their training area or not. So it was up to each of the paragliders if they still wanted to launch that day and risk the bad weather. Ava, who was really eager to get this training flight in, looked at the sky and saw that it was pretty gray, but decided that she was going to do it. Worst case scenario, she would have to cut it short. The rest of the German national team, they didn't want to take the risk, and so they stayed grounded that day. Ava took a little bit longer preparing her gear, so by the time she was lining up on the cliff, she was only one of a handful of people that remained. And so strapped into her glider, she took a good run forward and launched herself up into the air. On the ground, the rest of the German national team followed in a van to track her progress and checked in with her from time to time with their radio. The first... Why would you go hang gliding or any kind of gliding in the air during a storm like what? part of ava's journey was incredibly calm she followed the ridge line from mount bora for 12 miles until it ended at that point she entered into the skies over the vast savanna as her gps and tracking log ticked tracking her progress two large thunderstorm clouds appeared in front of her, one larger than the other. The vast majority of the other paragliders that had launched that day had launched ahead of Ava, and so when these clouds appeared, they had already passed that section, and so they didn't need to contend with the storm. As for Ava and the other two people she was with, which was an Austrian team member and a Chinese team member, they had a decision to make. They could either immediately ground their flight to avoid the storm, or they could attempt to dodge it they chose the latter. They knew it was too dangerous to try to fly underneath these clouds because of something called updraft. 
At the beginning of storms, warm air is sucked up from the ground up into these clouds, and a paraglider, what? if they get caught in that, can get sucked up with the air into the storm. And so Ava and the other two paragliders began aggressively flying around the outside of these clouds when all of a sudden the storm completely changed. The big cloud overtook the small cloud, creating this 12 mile wide cumulonimbus cloud that now all three paragliders were stuck inside of. Any updraft is dangerous to a paraglider, but the updraft of a cumulonimbus cloud is famously dangerous because it's extremely powerful and it lasts for over an hour. The Austrian man was able to pull down on one toggle, point his feet, and begin spiraling all the way out of the grasp of this updraft. And he said he turned to look at the other two and he didn't see the Chinese man, but he did see Ava, and she was desperately trying to do what he was doing and spiral down, but she was clearly caught oh, in the updraft and he watched her get pulled up into the black cloud out of view. By the time the Austrian oh. man hit the ground, he would say it had become the worst thunderstorm he had ever seen with huge hail balls hitting the ground all around him. He took one more look up, Dang, he didn't see Ava. the Chinese man, he didn't see Ava anywhere, and he took off running for a barn to seek shelter. And when he was there, he pulled out his radio and he alerted the other teams of this emergency. Inside the cloud, Ava was hurtling up like a rocket. The storm was lifting her at a rate of 60 feet per second. There was nothing she could do to get out of this wind tunnel. Ava knew she was getting pulled towards the storm's eye in its vicious center because of the immense oh, claps of thunder that just kept getting louder and louder. And it also kept getting darker and darker all around her. In fact, it was pitch black, except for the occasional flash of lightning that came very close to electrocuting her. As she desperately tried to keep her glider stable, what? she was able to place a radio call down to her team on the ground, but all she could say was, I can't see anything before it cut out. And at some point, Ava reached the Ugh. eye of the storm where it's pitch black and the temperatures are freezing and hail balls the size of oranges are pelting her left and right. And the updraft kept pulling her higher and higher and higher until she passed out from a lack of oxygen. And at some point- I was I was just about to say, how has she not passed out? Updraft actually shot her up and out of the cloud. And while this meant she was out of the storm, this is she crazy. was now in air that was 50 degrees below zero, which meant everything, her face, her gloves, her clothes, the wings of her glider, everything completely froze. And to make matters worse, at the altitude she was at, there was almost no oxygen and she did not have a breathing apparatus. So, so by she all freeze? accounts, Ava should be dead, but somehow, she didn't die. She just kept floating around what? above the storm cloud for 45 minutes. And then something happened. The ice on one side of the glider broke off, causing it to collapse, throwing her into a deadly free fall. And she's not in control. She's still unconscious. And she starts barreling back towards the ground like gravity has been turned back on again, going straight through the storm all over again. And so through the storm going at 90 feet per second, she clears the storm oh and then right after getting out from underneath it, her glider miraculously just opens back up again. And the jerking motion of her suddenly stopping her free fall jolted her awake. And so she's looking around totally confused as she's gradually regaining consciousness and she's taking stock of where she is. And she's still in the storm cloud, but right at the bottom what? of it. But luckily the updraft had stopped. And so she was steady and she was able to reach up and grab her toggles and she was able to fly herself down to the ground and crash land. And then she wow. curled into a ball, grabbed her radio and she called her team. When they heard her voice, they could not believe she was alive because the other paraglider that got sucked up by the updraft, the guy from wow. the Chinese national team, he unfortunately was struck by lightning and was killed. And oh, so they were anticipating man. finding out Terrible that Ava had been struck by lightning as well. But Ava had not just survived. When they brought her to the hospital, they discovered that virtually nothing was wrong with her. She had some pretty bad bruises and cuts from the this hail. Is crazy. And she had a little bit of frostbite on her face, but it was treatable. And so the same day she was brought in, they discharged her. After leaving the hospital, she and her teammates went back to the launch site so she could collect her gear. And when they got there, she looked at her GPS and the GPS had been tracking her entire flight the entire time she was up in that cloud. And she showed her teammates what it said and they literally couldn't believe it. The screen showed she wow. had reached an altitude of 32,634 feet, which to put this in perspective is the same altitude that? you fly at inside of a commercial jet. So imagine being outside of your plane in the middle of a flight and that's how high she was. Another reference point is she was approximately 4,000 feet higher than the summit of Mount Everest. No human being had ever been that high unprotected and lived wow. to tell the tale until Ava. So that's gonna do it guys. If you found this 
Y'all, Ava really, that was a miracle story. Like, these were really good stories because all of them had good endings, but they were really, really crazy things that you don't even think about that would happen in real life. Like, I'm amazed that she did not die, like, or get struck by lightning. It's just so many odds were against her. So many odds were against everybody in this video, but everybody made it out triumphantly and that was awesome so shout out to a happy ending for three videos straight y'all let me know which one was the craziest story to y'all which one was the most unbelievable to you guys for me it definitely had to be ava's story but also mike's story was crazy in the beginning too because that just never happens that way but Y'all let me know what y'all thought about this video. Thanks for tuning in again. If you're still here, thank you for watching to the end. And make sure you hit that subscribe button and make sure you turn your post notifications on so you get notified every time I drop a video. And y'all already know, until next time, peace.